Dear Jocelyn, if you were to ask me to close my eyes and think of the most precious moments of my childhood, they would be of you and I playing together. Do you remember when we used to play hide and go seek and you had me look for you for hours and I could not find you for the life of me? It was ridiculous. Like, I just said, you know what, I give up. So I went to the fridge, my fat ass, and, <laughs> and I got some food. And when I opened the fridge, to my surprise, there you were. <laughs> you were in there with icicles in your hair. <laughs> oh my god, we were so stupid. <laughs> One of my most fondest memories of you when you weren't dying of hyperthermia was when we would play house together. And in our home, we would make it out of blankets and pillows, and we would pretend to be parents together, even though you're like my niece. And we would go on all these crazy adventures, like one second, we'd have superpowers and saving the world, and the next, we'd be like international pop stars, and you'd be my backup dancer, of course, or something like that. But <laughs> in our, we could do anything, and we could be anything that we wanted to be in our perfect imaginary world. Nothing could hurt us. But Jocelyn, the reality is that I am now a survivor of sexual violence. When we are growing up, we learn about stranger danger. We learn not to take candy from strangers in white vans. We learn not to open our doors to strangers. Like when we are children, and you hear someone knocking on your doorbell and you peek around the corner real quick and then you hide, but in all actuality, it's just a UPS man. He's just trying to bolt the hell out of there. And you look stupid hiding underneath the coffee table. But what they don't tell you is that when sexual violence happens, it's usually with someone that you know, someone that you trust. What they don't tell you is that sometimes your own sexual abuser can live underneath the same roof as you. The first time I was molested by my father, yes, my father, I was only five years old. He tucked me in, climbed in the same bed as me, laid next to me and told me it was a game. And I used to love games. He told me it was our little secret and if I told anyone, I would be taken away and our family would lose our home. As a child of immigrants, I was taught to put family first. I was taught that my parents sacrificed so much for me to be in America and this was an opportunity that should not be wasted. And I was going to be just like my parents. I was going to sacrifice. So I thought I could sacrifice my body and endure this abuse to keep my family together. I was scared. I was so scared of being alone. Now, a more naive me, a more innocent young me, thought that compromise was the same thing as love. It is not. As I grew older and started growing into myself, come on, look at me glowing up. <laughs> I started coming to my identity as a gay man. Now, in any queer child's life, or any child's life for that matter, there comes a time where we not only have to be honest with ourselves, but the people who we surround ourselves with. And in most cases, that's our parents. And in the ideal game of house, the parents would be openly accepting and welcome their child for their bravery with open arms. But this is reality. When I came out to my parents, they threatened to kick me out. I was lost. I didn't know what to do. If my family wouldn't support me, then who would? So I decided to do what any good Hopkins student would do, and I went to school. <laughs> and the last period of the day was taught by the teacher, coincidentally, who was involved with LGBTQ stuff, 
uh, in my high school. And so, you know, I never paid attention in class, if you know me. But, you know, as she's, as she's talking to me, she's using her voice, and I'm hearing a different voice, and it's telling me, talk to her. Tell her what happened. You have nothing to lose. She can help you. And so, once everybody started trickling out the class, one by one, to go home, I decided to stay after. I was going to talk to her. So I got up out of my seat, and my heart was pounding. I could hear it in my ears, and my breath became more rapid, and I took a step towards her. And with each step, I took a step out of my comfort zone, and I came out to her. Now, I don't know what I expected, but I do know what she told me changed my life. I will never forget it. She told me, Jojo, you are so strong and you are so brave for coming out. And by coming out, you're paving the way for people like you. And most importantly, she told me that she believed in me. And for the first time in my life, to feel that I, someone believed in me, it gave me so much courage. It's indescribable, so much courage. And then everything, everything came out. All the abuse, all of the neglect, every dark little secret imaginable. I was shook. <laughs> and so the next second, I know I am running home because I know that my teacher is a mandated reporter. She has to report all of this is what happened to me. You know, I can't back out now. I have to tell my family. I have to come out to them. And for the second time, I came out to them as a survivor. When I got home, we had a family meeting. And we sat down at our dining room table, and everyone was in attendance, including my father. And the, the air was so tense, I couldn't breathe. The same table where we have shared so many memories, our dining room table where we had laughed together had become a court, and my family, the jurors. I was made to prove myself. And if I failed, the sentence, death. For the next two hours, the longest two hours of my life, I was crucified. I was the messenger that had to be shot. Everything became a blur. They yelled at me, and they screamed at me, and said all of these terrible things. But the only person who stood by me was you, Jocelyn. And I can never repay you. My family told me that I should kill myself, and that they didn't love me, and that I had made this up because I'm a liar, and I'm crazy. I am not crazy. At the end of a meeting, my family gave me an ultimatum. They told me that I could tell the truth to the child services worker, which would cause my father to be jailed, my siblings to be put into foster care, our family to lose the house, and me to be kicked to the curb <laughs> Or, or, I could tell them it was a lie. And just like in the imaginary game of house, this was all fictional. I had made this all up. Everything could go back to normal, my normal. So I lied. My own family silenced me. And in that moment, when my voice was taken away, I realized that I had to fight. No one can speak for you, only you can speak for you. And when you are in situations where your voice can't be heard, you need to get out, you need to leave. So that's what I decided to do. I was going to run away. So I focused on my studies and I focused on my academics. Every night and every day, I put in the work and I got a full ride merit-based scholarship to Hopkins. Yeah. 
I did it. I was here. That was me. I was one step closer to achieving that game of health, that I could be anything, and I could do anything I wanted to do. But Jocelyn, leaving you was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Because while I may have escaped the realities of her home, I realized that there was no escape. My freshman year, I got to choose my freshman roommate. He was just like me. He was extroverted and outgoing and fun and so much fun to be around. He was a queer person of color. He was just like me. He was my community. But two weeks, two weeks after I decided to run away, after I decided to start brand new, I would find that he was sexually assaulting and abusing people in our dorm. My friends, my neighbors, my housemates. And I knew what I had to do. I had been here before. I wasn't going to be silent this time, so I decided to be the change that I needed as a child. I spoke up for my housemates because I didn't want them to suffer in silence as I had for so many years. I reported him. None of us can run away from our problems because if we do, bad things will continue to happen to good people. I realized this. So I decided to be the change that I needed to see. I just wanted to help people. So I got involved with clubs on campus, like LGBTQ life, discussion about race and social identity, and I became a resident advisor, literally fostering a community. And now I know that my ideal life, or my life, may not be a, an ideal version of house, but I know now that I have a home. I have a home, and there are people who care for me, and there are people who love me, the people who I surround myself, they love me. You see, running away did not fix anything. It didn't change anything. There was no growth. Running away only causes us to run away from ourselves. When you run away, you become so scared of letting anyone or anything in. It becomes harder to return home. And I don't need to run anymore because I am home. And with the support of the people at Hopkins, my new family, I was able to report my father. However, in doing so, I was kicked out of my house. For so long, I was so scared of being alone. But I know now that I am not alone. You see, because I am one in six boys and one in four girls who will be sexually abused before they are of the age of 18. And I am one in three of those who will find the courage to speak out. I am not alone because there are people who care for me, who love me, and who will listen to me. I have come home. Now, when I tell people my story, especially my friends, they are shook, you know? <laughs> They're like, Jojo, why are you so strong? Why are you so brave? Why are you so beautiful? How, <laughs> how are you able to move forward? And I tell them that every day, every day I practice forgiveness because you see, the people who have hurt us have taken something from us that we will never get back, our time. And by not moving forward, they will only continue to win. Do not let them win. It is not worth it. 
forgive for yourself. Forgiveness is the greatest gift you can ever give to yourself because forgiveness not only allows closure, but it allows healing. And most importantly, it allows you to live and tell the tale. Now, whether you know someone who has been through something similar as I have, or you are going through something similar, or you know someone who was hurting, you have the power, each and every single one of you have the power to speak up and advocate for others. But most importantly, advocate for yourself. Me, right here, speaking to all of you, this is me breaking my silence after 20 years. And I'm encouraging you all to do the same. Now I know, I know it better than anyone. This will not be easy and I'm so sorry, but it won't. But bad things will continue to happen to good people. If we don't speak up, don't just do it for yourself. Do it for your friends. Do it for your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, for everyone. Because in doing so, you might save a life. And in doing so, you might encourage someone else to speak out. Who might encourage someone else to speak out? Who might encourage another and another and another? And you get the message. Speak up and speak out because your voice has more power than you have yet to realize. Dear Jocelyn, we are not children anymore. And maybe we've outgrown the game of house and hiding in refrigerators. But let me tell you something. When I went off to college, I found out I do indeed have a power. We all do, but yet some of us have yet to use it. You see, the ideal life that we used to pretend we have, it's not external. It's not materialistic, it's internal, it's inside of you. It's your happiness. And now there will be situations where people will hurt you. And there will be situations where the outcomes look bleak. But you, each and every single one of you listening to me right now, you have a power. And you have a power to make the decision to allow people to claim your voice for you or to, for you to claim it for yourself. And I choose to claim my voice. I choose happiness. I choose life. And now I'm breaking free of my past and I'm only taking steps forward. And I hope that each and every single one of you will join me in this everlasting movement with love, JoJo. Thank you.